Hi guys, we're going to continue our journey. We are trying to make it out of this place that we were put when we decided to be baptized, initiated into this religion, and we went into death. We're trying to actually rise from the grave is what we're trying to do. Okay, so when you are baptized, you die, you are buried with Jesus six feet under, um, you were found guilty of breaking God's laws, and so you are held under the schoolmaster, which is your law, a tutor and a governor, until the appointed time of the Father. When the Father can look down into this middle ground and say, oh, they have finally gained faith in Christ. They have finally learned that the devil's actually dead and destroyed, that Jesus ended the law, and so there are no other sinners out there that the world isn't as dark as they think it is. That is when you can be set free. Okay, so what happens when you start following the commandments is completely contrary to what your doctrine tells you. You think that you enter this religion and that you have faith in Christ. Wrong. You will eventually, through the law, the schoolmaster, the tutors and the governors, you will eventually have faith in Christ. That and only then is when you are set free. Okay, when you are under the law, what happens to you? For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, I died under law. I just told you that for the past 10 videos. You came into this religion. You said, yes, the 10 commandments are a guideline for me. I need to follow them until I can find faith in Christ. You, it's not that you immediately have faith in Christ. It's that you must follow the laws. You die under law. You die under law because they're futile, which is why you need the Savior. But you still, you have to, again, have some congruency here. You say you have faith in Christ and you don't need the law. Why on God's earth are you still practicing the Ten Commandments to the best of your ability? When you break a law, you still ask forgiveness and you repent a little bit and say, God, I'm sorry, I just, I coveted, oops. Well, do you have faith in that Christ ended the law or are you still following the law? If you are still asking forgiveness when you break a law, you are following the law and you have no faith in Christ who ended the law. Romans 10, 4, Jesus ended the law. For I was alive without the law once. You were alive in Egypt, you guys. You were alive in Egypt. You came under the law, under Moses, and you went into the fiery desert. You died. You died spiritually. You actually died, okay? Not a physical death. But in our baptize, baptisms, we die a spiritual death. This is why when we're baptized, our spiritual eyes are opened. We can see the dead. We can see the spirits. God, Jesus, the devil, demons, angels. We see the spirit world because we have died and entered the spirit world. The commandment, which was ordained to life. Yeah, in Deuteronomy 30, God says, if you follow these laws, I'm going to give you long, healthy life in the promised land, a milk, uh, land flowing with milk and honey. You shall be blessed if you follow these laws. Paul says, I found them to be unto death. So did I. Until you can find the commandments cause you death, you can't do anything. Remember from the last video, the law restrains you. Don't touch this. Don't covet that. Don't even look over there. Don't have hate for your brother in your heart, because then you are guilty, 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 death. You die. You sit surrounded by eggshells. And if you crunch on one of those shells, you are in jeopardy, jeopardy of being under judgment. The law is death. It's meant for the world of the dead. Well, you're dead. You're baptized. It's meant for you. The commandment which was ordained unto life, I found to be unto death. For sin, how does sin come about when you break a law? Taking occasion by the commandment. Sin comes about when you break a law. 
if you are not under law, you can't break a sin. You can't break a law. You can't have sin. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Romans 4.15. But you're under law. You can be guilty in it. Romans 2. Sin deceived me by the commandments. And by it slew me dead. All of Christianity is dead. Still believing in the Ten Commandments. That these are God's guidelines. We must follow the Bible. We must follow the rules. We must follow the statutes, the ordinances. Every jot and tittle of the book. But Jesus came to fulfill the law, to end the law. Okay? The law kills. The law kills. You're dead. Christianity is dead. Okay? It's, I know how it sounds because I've been there. I wouldn't know if I hadn't been there. But if you are following it faithfully enough, you would feel it too because you are chastised in the spirit. You do feel convicted of your guilt every turn you take. If you're following it correctly, and you must if you want the glory at the end because right now you have no faith in Christ. Faith in Christ is the key. You have to believe that the law is ended, that you don't need to follow it. You have to believe that the devil's destroyed and that his works are destroyed. You have to believe that the letter that you follow kills you. The letter that you are following is killing you. If you're following it closely enough, you would see that. Okay? Now we must ask the two things that Jesus did at the cross. His blood did not atone for your sin just because God needed a human sacrifice. It's not God that needs a human sacrifice. It's the devil. He paid your price to the devil to release you from your chains in hell. That's what he's supposed to do. You're still chained there. And how do you know that you are still chained there? Well, first, you still follow the law. It's restraining you. That's your chain. Second, everywhere you look, everybody's evil. That is the definition of living in hell. You still have a tutor over you, a governor over you, and a taskmaster over you because you have no faith in Christ. Okay, so if we can put those things together, what you need to do is give up your faith in the devil. He's already dead. Then you have to give up your faith in the law. The letter kills you. The devil and the law. The devil and the law. The two things that Jesus came to earth to conquer. So let me quickly, if this is the first video you're watching from me, you probably think I've off my marbles, but let me just get those scriptures for you quickly. Okay. Well, I don't know why it's not giving them to me, but here we go. Colossians 2. Why did Jesus come to earth? He blotted out, deleted the laws, statutes, and commandments because they were against us and contrary to us. He took it which is the handwriting of ordinances, all the written laws, deleted the written laws in modern day English, deleted the written commandments, took them out of the way and nailed them to his cross. Nailed them to his cross, crucified them. Verse 
For Christ is the end of the law because he crucified the law, fulfilling it, nailing it to his cross. Done. The law is ended. Okay? And then... Why did Jesus come? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the devil. So he destroyed the law. He didn't destroy the law because you still follow it. He did fulfill it and end it, and you don't have faith in that. And so you still follow it, including every jot and every tittle, the whole book. And then he destroyed the works of the devil. There is no more sin. There is no more evil. There is no more enemy to put on your armor and fight against. But you don't believe that. These are the two works of Jesus, and you don't believe in it. This is why you are not saved. This is why you're not saved. You will not make it into the pearly gates because you have no faith in how he did this. I just told you how, though. He ended the law, which was convicting you as guilty. If there is no law, you have to be innocent. If there is no law, you have to be innocent. Okay. Concepts. Principles are what we fight against, you guys. Not flesh and blood, not some ghost of a devil. It's renew your mind. Okay? Have faith in Christ. So the last part of this, if Jesus came to end the law and end the devil, how was the law... Jesus' father's work? Why would Jesus end his father's magnum opus, the law? We'll talk about that in the next video. Thanks for watching.